Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, so let's do some more Smith chart plotting. And I think in my previous video, we learned how to plot uh, open circuit impedances, short circuit impedances, and your uh, match circuit. And, uh, and how do I find reflection coefficient and reflection angles and things like that. So today we're going to take a complex load and we're going to learn how to plot this on a Smith chart. And once we plot this on a Smith chart, we're going to learn how to find SWR, reflection coefficient, using graphical method, using a Smith chart. We can use also transmission line equations to also do that. So let's do this. So here's my Smith chart. And in, Smith, in my Smith chart, I have my load, which is a complex load. That is ZL is equals to 100 plus J100. So as soon as I see a plus sign with J, I know I'm looking at a Smith chart on an upper region. All right, because this is your center line. If you recall it from my first video. So this is your center line. And this is where you plot your real part, which is this guy. And this is after J, this is going to be your imaginary part, either your inductive or your capacitive. The transmission line that is connecting my load is actually 50 ohms. So let me change this to 50 ohms. All right. Uh, if you have seen the values on your Smith chart, let's look at it closely. If you see these values, these values are actually normalized values. If you can see it on your Smith chart, these values are all normalized value. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way up, going all the way up to infinity. These are actually your uh, values which are actually uh, in terms of normalized values same thing with these concentric circles that are moving like this they are also in terms of normalized value so the first thing i need to do when i'm plotting anything on a smith chart is actually to to normalize this the reason uh, so we can plot it on a smith chart after we normalize it we can just uh, take it out and renormalize it by multiplying it with your uh, character six impedance. I'm going to show you that. How am I going to do that? So the first thing I need to do is divide your load with this. So once I divide my ZL with my Z impedance, so this is going to be two plus so 100 divided by 50 is two. 100 divided by 50 is two. So this is going to be J2. So this is your normalized value. So now your load is normalized now with respect to your impedance. This impedance could be 75 ohms, 100 ohms, 50 ohms, but the industry standard is around 50 ohms. Uh, and mostly our VNAs and spectrum analyzer, mostly generally they are 50 ohms. Because when you look at the uh, your spectrum analyzer or your VNA, it actually says there that it's 50 ohms. So the input impedance of those devices are 50 ohms. Uh, so, so once you normalize this, it's just a matter of plotting it now. Now, we're going to go here on my real axis. We're going to look at where my 2 is. Where is that circle? The, cir uh, the 2 is located at. So if I go onto my axis right here, I can easily see 2 is located right here. This is where my 2 is. So this is your real part. So 2 is right here. This is where it's located at right here now since it's a plus sign i'm going to look at my inductive impedance uh, i'm going to look at the upper part of my circle and i'm going to locate where my uh, two line is the line where it says two so i know on this this is one and this one is 1.2 as you can see 1.4 1.6 1.8 and 1 2 2 is located right here so i'm going to go over to this circle I'm going to go here, I'm going to go, 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 go here, and I'm going to mark a point where, where there's an intersection between this circle and this concentric line or this circle. So that is located right here. This is my point. All right. So this is 2, which is coming from here, and J2, this is that line, because it's positive, that's why it's on top of the circle. On the top part of the circle if it was minus 100 it would be located somewhere down here so once you have done this so this is your point which is 2 plus j2 
All right. So once I plot this point, the next step is this. I need to find out what is going to be my impedance. Okay. So the first thing that I need to do is this. Take your ruler or your scale and then draw a line from the center of this. So the next step that you need to do is this. Draw a line from that center. You need to always draw a line from the center all the way up to this point. All right. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to draw this line. That line is going to be from the center, from this location, all the way up to this point. All right? So once you draw this line, I'm going to measure this line. The best way to do it, take a piece of paper and go from center to this point. So let's go here, from here to here. Go from here to here and mark it on the pa paper. On a small paper, from that center, all the way up to that point, and mark it on your paper. So this is this location right here. So this, the length of this line, because sometimes when you're making a measurement using ruler, it might distract you. But in this way, you can actually mark it from your center point all the way up to the point where you plot your impedance. Now, once you have this thing, this is what we're going to use to actually find out what is going to be my reflection coefficient, which is what is going to be my SWR and my angle and all of that stuff. Now, in order for me to find out the angle, I need to go here onto these concentric circles. So, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make this line and I'm going to take this line all the way outside of that circle right here. I'm going to mark it like this. I'm going to draw this line like this. Once I have drawn this line, now look at it. Where does this line is intersecting these circles? So if you were to look at it closely, where does this line intersecting these circles? So the thing that I'm looking at, I'm interested in this angle of reflection, which is not this circle, it's actually this circle. So angle of reflection right here, that's what it's that's where it says angle of reflection, coefficient in degrees. So this line is intersecting at about 30 degrees. So this is if you were to look at it closely, this this is angle of reflection, and this line is intersecting at about 30 degrees. So the angle of reflection is actually 30 degrees. Now I need to find out because as you know, reflection coefficient is actually consist of a magnitude plus the angle. Okay, so now let's try to find out where is my magnitude. What is my magnitude? For this, we're going to use this handy paper where we marked our location of that point, which is from here, from here all the way up to here. So now let's go back down to this point. Now, if you were to look at it, your SWR, the first line, the top line. So let's let's look at it again. If you were to look at it closely, the first line is actually SWR in terms. So this is in linear scale, and this is SWR in dBs. You have return loss on top values. These are your dBs. This is your reflection coefficient in terms of power. And this is reflection coefficient in terms of voltages and current. So this is what we are interested in. Reflection coefficient with respect to voltages and current. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our handy piece of paper where we have marked these two points. And I'm going to go to the center point right here. I'm going to locate this point right here. And I'm going to write off, write down the values. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this piece of paper right here at the center of it and I'm going to find out the location of it. So if I were to look at it closely from my center going in this direction, so we're looking at it in terms of this direction. So this is what it looks like. So 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.6 is right here and 0 0.62. So 0 0.62, this is going to be my magnitude reflection coefficient magnitude, magnitude in terms of voltages. 
All right, so if I'm interested in SWR, I'm going to go on the top line and I'm going to go put this on the center. And SWR is about 4.5. So this is SWR is about 4.5. And the other thing that I'm also interested in is your transmission coefficient as well. How much wave is being transferred? How much voltage is being transferred from my, from my source to my load? So we're going to look at it right here. We're going to go here at the center point. And if you were to look at it closely, so from here, this is where transmission coefficient voltages and current is, if you were to look at it. So I'm going to go to that scale. I'm going to put this on the center. And this is approximately around 1.62. So your transmission coefficient, transmission coefficient is 1.62. All right, there's something else you need to remember. So your reflection coefficient, the magnitude of this is actually consist of 0 0.62, that's the magnitude, and the angle is 30 degrees. Your transmission coefficient, transmission coefficient turns out to be 1.62. So all you need to remember regarding transmission coefficient, transmission coefficient is 1 plus the magnitude of your reflection coefficient. So as you can clearly see, I am getting about 1.62, little bit, little bit more than 1.62. It's so that's the rule. One plus reflection coefficient, magnitude of your reflection coefficient would gives you transmission coefficient. Indeed, we are getting exactly the same thing. We're just a little bit off about point 1.621. One, some something like that. But this, that's the idea. So 1.62 is your transmission coefficient. Your SWR is 4.5. Your reflection coefficient is 0 0.62, 30 degrees of an angle. Transmission coefficient, the magnitude is 1.62. Let's try to find out what is going to be my angle. Now angle, in order for me to see the transmission, uh, transmission angle, now here's the first concentric circle that you see, it says, angle of transmission coefficient in degrees. So that turns out to be around, if I were to look at it, so this is 10, this is around 15, so around 16 degrees. So this angle is about 16 degrees. So the angle for this is about 16 degrees. So this is how you find out what is going to be your reflection coefficient, how you're going to plot your impedances, complex impedances on a Smith chart, how to find out your reflection coefficient, transmission coefficient, SWRs, and, and their respected angles. Um, the next thing, so what do I mean by that? So as you can clearly see, this is not a properly matched scenario. Why? Because if it was matched, the value should be on this real axis, but it's not properly matched which means my my input impedance is actually real but my complex uh, my load impedance is actually consists of real plus complex impedances and so based on this i would definitely have some reflection and that reflection the reflected uh, wave so if i'm sending 1 volt at the end of my load i'll be receiving 0.62 volts and i have some reflected wave which will have a reflected degree angle of de reflection is going to be 30 degrees 1.62 is going to be my transmission coefficient and 16 degrees of okay last thing that uh, i said so when you are plotting these values you have to normalize it in order for me to denormalize it what we're going to do whatever your value is going to be right here just simply multiply it by 50. Once you multiply by Z0, you will get 100 plus J100. You will get the same values back. These values won't change, uh, but if you want to denormalize it, you can denormalize it by multiplying, multiplying it by 50 ohms, and you will get your values back, original load values back. So I hope you like this small tutorial on uh, how to plot impedances, specifically complex impedances, and try to find out what is the reflection coefficient, transmission coefficient, and SWR. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section, and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.